let's look at this example of an image size 100 by 100 and containing points in the corners and also a point in the middle. So let's, so that means um, here's our parameter array um, and we said it goes from minus 90 degrees to plus 89 and the uh, maximum value of rho would be um, 100 times square root of 2 because it's the diagonal so it would be uh, 144 and I'll just use minus 144 for the minimum even though I don't think it will go that far so let's look at point number one first which is in this upper left corner um, the line that is um, well all lines as you can see pass directly through the point which is the origin so the value of rho is zero. So it doesn't matter what the angle is. So I would get in the parameter space um, votes for all lines lying along that horizontal red line here. Um, let's take a look at another point. Um, how about point number two? So the point, the, the line that is vertical like that, um, the vector to that point is this, which has an angle of zero degrees. And the uh, value of rho is basically the uh, width of the image, which is 100. So that gives me a point um, rho equals 100, theta equals zero. Um, the horizontal line through that point has a, um, a row of zero um, and an angle of minus 90. So um, that would be this point. Or I could swing it around the other way and think of that as a point uh, close to plus 90 or 89 degrees. So it's, it kind of is about right um, here. Um, the diagonal line like that has a, um, a vector that points um, in the plus 45 degrees and the value of rho is half the maximum or 72. So um, this would be the point um, rho equals 72, theta equals 45 degrees. So if you figure out other points, you'll find that the curve that this point generates um, looks like that. So it's, those are the lines that could pass through point number two. Um, let's look at one more. Um, how about point number four here? So first let's look at the vertical line. The vertical line passes through the origin, so that has a row of zero and an angle of, um, of zero. So that point is here. Um, then we've got the uh, horizontal line. So the value, it, it basically has a angle of minus 90, in which case the row value is um, minus 100. I'll write that here. Or we could swing that around and that becomes um, a value close to uh, plus 100 and plus 89. So if we draw those points we would get a curve that looks like that. So these intersect um, at this value of 72.45. So those, that represents the line that passes through both of those points. Here's an example of applying the Huff transform to this grayscale image. Here is the edge image uh, obtained by the Canny algorithm. This is a picture of the Huff 
parameter space. And then we find peaks in this space, which are shown by these little boxes here. Those correspond to these uh, two vertical lines. And if we project those back into the image, we see that lines up with um, these two uh, lines in the image. Um, so to implement the Huff transform, this is what the code would look like. We first would um, perform edge detection to get an edge image, then loop through the image and check every point x, y to see if there's an edge point there. If there is, we loop through all theta, all, the, all possible values of theta, compute the value of rho for that combination of x, y, and theta. Then we um, take the computed value of rho and theta and we figure out where in the parameter array um, that corresponds to and we increment that value. So fairly simple algorithm but it does require um, these nested loops like that. Um, so we'll look at how to do this in MATLAB. Um, first of all we're going to create a uh, theta array we'll call it. So it will contain the values minus 90, minus 89, minus 88, and so forth up to plus 89. We'll also create a row array, so that will be all possible values of row. Uh, int we'll just stick with integer values going from minus d max to plus d max. We'll create a parameter array, call it h, that is the size of, um, that holds all possible values of theta and rho. We actually need to use indices um, you know, that start at 1 and go to, in this case, uh, 180. So even, even though the array has indices 1 through 180, it actually represents values of theta from minus 90 to plus 89. And similarly, the rows um, vertically represent, well, they're indices from 1 to something, but they represent values of <coughs> the distance row from minus d max to plus d max. So we would write the code like this. If we find an edge point in the edge image at this location, we loop through all possible values of theta. Uh, remember, theta is an array containing the angles. Um, we, we get the actual theta in degrees using this uh, t here. Then for each value of t, we compute values of rho the value of rho corresponding to that x, y, and theta. We then um, have to figure out where, what index in the parameter array this value of rho corresponds to. So the way we'll do that is we'll, we'll take the value we computed, let's say it's minus 142, we'll subtract that from our array of rho values so we would get, let's say, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, etc. We would find the minimum in this, and the absolute value of this, so that would correspond to this position, and then look for, take what, whatever index we have here. So um, that can be done easily with this MATLAB command. We, we subtract the 2 using row minus r, take the absolute value of, those, of that array, find the minimum, and returns the minimum value and the index at which that minimum was found. So in this case, the minimum value is a 0, the index is a 3. So here's a program that does that. Um, we start with an edge image called E. Here it finds the um, maximum distance across the diagonal. Here we create the theta array and the row array. We allocate the accumulator array of that size, scan through the edge image. If we find a point, we do this looping over um, theta. Here we get the actual value of theta in radians. Um, we compute the equivalent row for that point. Here's where we find that point in the row space um, called I row. And here's where we increment the parameter array.